Hi guys. I am inviting you to help me set up my unit study for Halloween this year. So this is our little nook. As you can see, it's like, I got it at a thrift store. It, it, has, it has doors on the inside, so it's actually meant to be turned around and used as like a cabinet. Um, but I thought that it made such a great little unit study nook. And so I flipped it around. It really needs a ton, you know, to be like finished. It, it needs to be totally repainted. Um, but it has just been this really great little piece of furniture for our home school. And so I thought it might be cool to see how I set up our unit studies with it. <laughs> To what I've set up here. I know this looks a little bit different than um, my original setup only two days ago, but we have already been quite busy with our Halloween unit for our homeschool. So um, I will go ahead and kind of show you the activities that I've chosen, the games, the books, the studies, and um, all that fun stuff. So let's do it. So I'll just start by showing these cards that I found on the Halloween unit I bought from Etsy. I always display cards like this as a banner for my unit studies. They encourage literacy and, you know, just add a nice aesthetic to the unit. And then, of course, just like bringing in some Halloween decorations that you already have to decorate the unit just makes it more fun. And then just, yeah, again, just using some of the Halloween decor that you already have to kind of decorate the wall. And um, I hung up a spider web. Yeah, it's just fun. So we are two days into our Halloween study uh, and we did bats the first day and then today we did spiders. So I've used my slow down book that I talk about a lot. They have a two page spread here on a spider weaving its web. And then another great homeschool resource, Nature Anatomy by Julia Rothman has a little spread on spiders as well. I love these because they're really simple. The drawings are, you know, just very pretty and simple and something that draws the kids in because it's not overly complicated. This was a little pocket guide, DK Genius pocket guide of bugs. And then, and then we've got the spider life cycle here also from that Halloween unit study. We have switched our science curriculum um well we're trying out mystery science and so i've been using their little five minute mini units the last couple of days for these this halloween study they had a mini unit on bats and a mini unit on bugs um and some of these mini units even have activities included with them and so far we're really enjoying mystery science so we are going to continue with their Halloween mini units for the rest of the week. The activity for the bug unit was these, um, these centipede cutouts, which were really fun. So this is the Halloween unit study that I found on Etsy. I will link it in the description box. I only printed out a few things that I knew I would talk about with the kids. So I printed out their little um, their info on bats and spiders. I will show you all of the extra activity stuff that came with this that we're using. And then we'll just do a little social studies unit on the history of Halloween. And that's it. Really short guide. I'm keeping that super simple for my young kiddos. So here we'll get into some of the activities. I always use these like trays, little like wood boxes, baskets, trays, anything like that I love using for my unit studies to display things. 
And I thought these little mini cauldrons would be cute for their morning snacks. You know, and just throwing in a cute, a couple cute little things like that for them to play with while we're doing like read alouds or whatnot. So these are the activities that I pulled. I found this National Geographic Kids Magazine at our library. This is a great way to, you know, maybe put it into your morning basket. You know, a great way to start off the morning cuddling with the kids on the couch. Or just, you know, a fun way to start your school day at the table. This was a fun game, Roll a Monster. Here are a couple templates that I used. Um, and the kids really had a good time with this. So I'll try to link the templates. I can't quite remember where I found those. But it just requires one die. We had to make a couple of adjustments with the, uh, you know, the body parts, but you know, the template and a glue stick and was really, was really fun. This hocus pocus recipe is really fun. I, so I took this template and I paired it with this hocus pocus cookbook for kids. My idea was that I'd have my daughter pick out anything that she wanted. She did end up picking out the fully charged crystal candy but this book has, you know, sweet and savory recipes. Um, some of them quite complicated for a kid. But I thought that this would be a great writing exercise and then also just a great cooking exercise. And the crystal candy she picked out actually is a great science experiment too. So then I will have her write down the recipe in these little ingredients um, spaces. And she can, you know, come up with her own name. And then it's a fun coloring sheet. These came with the Halloween unit, my Halloween costume. I'm going to surprise the kids on our last day of our Halloween unit with their Halloween costumes that arrived. Maybe they want to draw them. These are just finding the differences between the two pictures. So a couple of those. How many pumpkins are there? This is a good one for my three-year-old learning how to count. So those are just like some of the little, um, you know, easy paper activities that I picked out. Okay, so I always include some coloring sheets with my unit studies. These are great during read alouds. We do these almost every, every day. These came with the Halloween unit, came with quite a few. I think I just printed a couple. And then I've got this little tray. I'm not sure where I got this, but again, anything like this, any kind of wooden tray is always so great for these unit studies. I've got a few more of my writing tiles. So then um, this came with the unit and I printed it out and laminated it as a pumpkin life cycle activity. Next week we will do a little bit of a pumpkin unit. This will be good for my three-year-old. And then here I've got my life cycle board. This is one of my favorite purchases for unit studies. I use this with just about every unit that we do. And then uh, the mini or the mystery science also has a mini unit on skeletons. So we're doing that this week. I'm going to pair it with this simple skeleton activity. This will be good for my three-year-old. Um, the unit also has a skeleton activity um, with a hand, uh, an art project might be a little bit more advanced. So my six year old will enjoy that one. So let's get into the games that I picked out for our unit. I did buy these. These are, um, I think the only two things that I spent money on for the unit aside for a few dollars on the Etsy unit. This is a uh, scary dice. So we have not used these yet. So they are like these jumbo dice, they glow in the dark. So wow, these would be so fun on like a camp trip. And um, they come with the instructions here. So um, the instructions show what each dice represents. So it's basically like building a story. You've got your heroes, your setting, your tools, your obstacles, monsters, twists, and endings. Um, so like at first glance, it almost seems a little complicated, um, but I'm sure that once we get into it, we're really going to love it. 
they have a couple of ideas on how to play too. So I'll show this. So I'll show this as well. I am going to be doing um, like a build, uh, a build your story with my daughter as a language arts assignment. The role of story, I believe I got this on Pinterest, match it with a die. This I think is maybe um, a little bit more of um, a simpler way to roll a story than the scary dice. So we're going to try both. But um, I want to help her. She loves writing stories. And so I want to kind of use these tools, these templates that I found at Target. I don't think I'll use all of them for this assignment. I might just choose one of these, like the story map, I think is a good one. Um, or like this creating characters looks good. And have her write a Halloween story using the roll the die um, method. And then um, I want to surprise her with one of these bear books. Um, I think bearbooks.com is the website. They sell these bear, you know, blank hardcover books that are great quality. They, you know, look just like a real book. The pages are nice and thick. I think it has about 20 pages. And she's been using those ones from the dollar spot at Target and she loves those and she fills them up quick. But I really want her to take her time with this story and, um, you know, try to entice that by giving her a nice hardcover book. Cauldron Quest is the, the board game that I bought for our Halloween unit. I have been wanting to buy this for quite some time because I know my daughter loves magic spells, anything with witches, anything with magic. So I'll just kind of open it up and show you guys what it's like inside. We played it for a few minutes today, um, but we didn't have a lot of time and it is quite a complicated game. So it's six years old and up and I definitely agree with that. It has a lot of elements. So the idea is that you've got this wizard who like blocks your path as you're trying to get the chosen ingredients into the cauldron. And it comes with these like ingredient um, mark pegs, players, whatever you'd call them. And then it has these path blockers <laughs> that you can move if you roll the right dice, you choose three ingredients to go into the, the cauldron and then you try to get your ingredient, little these little green players, the right ingredients into the cauldron. It comes with these magic dice and then the, the action dice. The action dice determine your move. And so there's all these, there's like four different possibilities of rolling the action dice. One of them is you get the magic charms. So this is where math comes in, rolling evens, odds, rolling a total of 12s. I really like that part, but right, complicated. So like a lot of rules to this game, um, we will, yeah, I'm sure that we will get really into it. It might just take a few times playing to figure it out, but thankfully my daughter loves board games and I think that she will have the patience to figure this one out. Okay, so let's get into the books that I chose for our, our Halloween unit. I'm still waiting on a few books to arrive at the library, so this is not all of them. This first one on Halloween night. This um, is a counting book with a, you know some really fun illustrations, I think. It's definitely kind of spooky. But it'll be a good counting book for, for my son. Trick or Treat Marley is definitely one of our favorites. We read this every Halloween about a very naughty dog <laughs> as a family is trying to set up for a Halloween party really sweet. I love the illustrations in this. These are just a couple little old favorites. Five Little Pumpkins. My daughter loved that one when she was little. 
And this is um, probably her favorite Halloween book, Pinkalicious, Pink or Treat. Pinkalicious saves the town from a power outage by planning a Halloween party in the park. Another one my kids love, even monsters need haircuts. Little boy takes after his father's um, barber skills by uh, cutting monsters hair after midnight at his dad's barber shop every full moon. Uh, we haven't read this one yet, Where's My Mummy? But this one looks cute for my three-year-old. And he's really been loving saying the word mummy. <laughs> so here's the Hocus Pocus cookbook for kids that I already showed. How to make an apple pie. So we read this um, today and what a wonderful book. Really, really cool. It is all about a girl who wants to make an apple pie and the how to make an apple pie and see the world apologies that's the name of the book so she goes to the market and the market is closed so she has this ingredient list and so the book is all about well the market's closed so go to europe get your semolina wheat from italy go to france pick out a chicken uh, because chicken french chickens laid the best eggs go to sri lanka to get your cinnamon Go to England to get your cream. Go to Jamaica to get your salt and sugar, sugar cane. And then don't forget the apples. Stop in Vermont to get the best apples. And then it breaks down how to actually turn all of these um, crops into ingredients. It's really really cute book. Um, I don't, I don't think my daughter was like super, super into it, but I thought it was really sweet. And then there's an apple pie recipe in the back. So that's the book collection that we have so far. And then I threw in a little DVD, Peppa Pig Pumpkin Party. <laughs> got some good ideas for your own homeschool Halloween season and I'll see you soon.